This is Paul Poirier at the American Banjo Museum. And we're doing our best to preserve, present, and promote the banjo in all of its styles. But we can't do it without you. We need your support. So I hope you'll join me in contributing to your American Banjo Museum. And thank you. Davis. I'm uh, going to play some banjo for you today. I'm um, very honored to be uh, asked to perform, and especially by such an awesome institution. Um, yeah, it's really, really humbling. So I uh, hope you enjoy the music. Um, this is my first performance uh, since it's been over a year, at least. Um, so it should be a lot of fun for you and for me. Um, I'll try to do my best. So here we go, let's just get started. I'm gonna start with uh, one of my favorite Scruggs tunes, uh, Ground Speed. Um, so I hope you all like it. <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining applause, but I don't know, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's more hopeful than I should have been. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna switch banjos up. Since this is a, a banjo uh, performance for banjo people, uh, I'm just gonna take this opportunity to show off. This is uh, a banjo made by Ohm. Ohm Banjos out of Boulder, Colorado. I'm a very big fan of their uh, work that they do. Uh, it's, an, it's an Odyssey, an Ohm Odyssey with a, a mega tone, 200 tone ring, um, maple, and I had it built, oh, probably about five years ago. I really like the sound of it, though. It's very uh, lovely and banjo-y, which is all the right categories for me. So um, I'm going to pull out next. This other banjo, also by Ohm, uh, 
I don't know. Ohm didn't know they were going to get a, a free plug from me, but um, this is the Ohm icon, and I'm you know, mahogany, so I'll, I'll, I'll quit banjo, banjo nerding out. Well, maybe, maybe a little bit later we'll do some more of that. But um, this next one's a, a tune I wrote. It's on an album that I put out a few years back called New World. Um, and this tune is called Imaginary Lines. Let's try that again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd like to play a little bit of Bach. Uh, this is one of, from one of his uh, violin sonatas, and I really love this particular movement. Um, uh, it's from violin sonata number one in G minor, and this is the, the fugal movement. All right, so we'll give it a try. We'll see if I don't tie my fingers in a knot. <laughs>
Hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's one of my favorite pieces of music to play. I'd like to learn some more Bach in the future. Um, so yeah, and just so you all know, uh, today I'm I'm in Nebraska. This is my well, this is my room. Um, I live in Lincoln, Nebraska these days. I used to live in Tennessee, and was going to school in Michigan for a while. Uh, right now I'm attending Saint Gregory the Great Seminary here in Nebraska. I'm uh, studying to become a Catholic priest one day, so God willing, uh, continuing with that, I'll, I'll be ordained in about seven years. So please pray for me, uh, pray for vocations, um, and pray that uh, I still find time to play the banjo um, amidst my studies and everything. So it's uh, something I really enjoy, of course, and uh, hope to be able to keep doing for a long time. Uh, whenever I can, so may the glory be his. Uh, all right, let's see. Next. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. You know, I'd like to play a hymn. I didn't have one written out, but I was just thinking that'd be nice. Nice. I think you guys like hymns, probably. I'll try my best. I'll, you know, I'm just going to play through it a verse or two of um, a hymn that I like. Let's see, we just, uh, we just finished the octave of Pentecost. So how about, let's, here's one called Come Holy Ghost. Sorry, it's, you know, it's really strange to perform over a uh, uh, video, you know, um, it's nice, it's very humbling when you end the song and then there's nobody clapping, you know, it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you're all enjoying it. Um, again, big thanks to the Oklahoma National Banjo Museum uh, for hosting this, putting this on. Um, many success, successes to them and hopefully they have a bright future ahead, preserving the great uh, history of the banjo and um, doing all the great work that they do. So, um, yeah, very grateful for them. And again, honored to be asked to play for this. So, let's see. 
Um, how much time we got left? I guess we got as much time as we need. Um, here's a tune from my last record that I put out entitled Outlander. Um, it's a, a solo banjo piece. This one's called Hogan's Alley. And, you know, somebody told me that when they heard this song, they remembered a, a game when they were a kid called Hogan's Alley. This tune is not about that. This tune is about a different Hogan's Alley, which, uh, do I have time to explain this? It's, uh, there's this game, it's a Canadian board game, it's called Crokinole. And Crokinole has a big circular wooden board. It's kind of like shuffleboard, but miniature, and it's a circle. And I've got these pegs in the middle, and so the objective of the game is to place your disc onto the board. You flick it with your finger, and you want to knock other players' discs off the board. Um, but there's this one gap between these pegs, and the players call it Hogan's Alley. And... Uh, a couple years ago, I played a lot of Crokinole with some roommates. I had a roommate, Connor Reinman. Uh, shout out to him. He's a great um, composer. Uh, but he's also, I think, third best in the world at Crokinole. So uh, look him up, Crokinole Center, on YouTube. You can watch some of his games. He's amazing. Very talented man. Uh, so anyway, after playing a lot of Crokinole uh, with him and... Grant Flick from Westbound Situation, Jacob Warren. Uh, this one's called Hogan's Alley. Um, I 
when I wrote that tune, I was listening very much to a lot of his, his new solo album. Not so new anymore, I guess. It was new back then. Uh, Waveland, if you haven't heard that, you should check it out. Gnome is uh, one of the greatest banjo players on the planet, I, in my estimation. Um, and uh, yeah, in fact, I was, I was graced with his presence just last night, that him and the Punch Brothers, they came through Nebraska just about an hour away. I was able to go up and uh, we were able to swap some banjo licks before the show and uh, um, see them play and everything. And that was a really great time. So happy that people are starting to come out again, play the play shows and, you know, have some public gatherings. I think that's uh, fantastic. So um, wish I could have been there in person for, for this, um, but uh, alas, maybe next time. Uh, let's see. I'm so I'm, I'm looking at my list here. You probably see me, and I'm just debating that I have a new tune that I've been working on that hasn't been recorded nor played uh, in the public eye uh, ever from time memorial. Uh, so, but I'm but it's not quite done. Is the problem? <laughs> it's almost done. I'm wondering whether I should play it for you today or not. I'd really like to. Um, and I, I kind of have a, a way to end it, so maybe we'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'm gonna give it a try. And uh, you're probably thinking, oh boy, this guy, not even a real professional. He's debating or not whether he's gonna play his, his unfinished music in front of people. But, uh, you know, when you, when you stay cooped up for a year, and, and you know, that's, that's what happens to you, so. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna give it a go. This one, uh, it doesn't, well, it doesn't have a name yet, so it's new, uh, taking suggestions. Uh, so, here we go. <laughs>
so bad. This is a couple of bumps. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I hope you like it. Um, that was, like I mentioned, a new tune uh, that I've written recently, I guess. I've been working on it for like a year and just haven't been able to finish it. But anyways, that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, you know, keep playing. Uh, now I'm going to play something that I didn't write. Everyone's like, oh, finally. No. Uh, <laughs> this is one. Um, uh, earlier this year, uh, I suppose, I guess it was last year, 20, 2020. Uh, time's flying by. Um, I was uh, very surprised, honored, and, and humbled to be one of the five winners of the Steve Martin Banjo uh, Prize in Banjo Excellence. Something, something like that. Uh, and... Yeah, I, I got this this thing in the mail and I opened it up. I was walking back to class, you know, in the seminary and it says, you've won $10,000 for the Steve Martin Banjo Award in Excellence. And I looked over to one of my classmates and he's like, that's gotta be a scam. There's no way. And I was like, no, it's a real thing. It is, it is. I know that people have won it before, and, you know, and he's like, I don't know. I wouldn't, <laughs> so that was really funny. But um, the reason I bring this up is, is not to gloat, of course, but um, to share uh, the, the joy in, in receiving the award. There are four other fantastic winners, um, one of whom is uh, Jerry O'Connor, an Irish banjo player from Ireland, presumably. And um, he's awesome. I've listened to him for a long time, and I'm, I'm so... So very pleased that he was also one of the winners, very much deserved. Uh, so he didn't write these tunes, but here's a couple tunes that I heard him play in a in a set once. Um, so I'm gonna try to emulate the Irish thing with my five string here. We'll we'll see how it goes. Sometimes it works, uh, like 80% of the time. So uh, here goes nothing. This is uh, Banish Misfortune uh, into uh, in a, a, which is a jig going into a reel. Uh, called Made Behind the Bar. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
sometimes I can't help myself. I like I end things as silly as as is possible. Uh, anyways, though, hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know that reminds me. Actually, this year at the seminary on St. Patrick's Day, there's a lot of there's a lot of guys with uh, Irish heritage, and one of the guys, you know, brewed some some beer, and they had some uh, corned beef uh, sandwiches. Yeah, the Rubens, that's it, and. Um, to my great delight, somebody pulled out a fiddle, and another guy had a, a penny whistle, um, and somebody had one of the, the Baron things, and I got my banjo, and, and we just started playing Irish tunes, and everybody, it was a it was a jovial affair. It really was just a fantastic way to spend St. Patrick's Day. Um, so, uh, if you if you haven't heard of Jerry O'Connor. Go check him out. You know he would he would do what I just played, like you know, but he would blow your mind. Uh, yeah, so check out Jerry O'Connor and the other winners as well. BB Bowness from Mile Twelve, uh, uh, Jake. Oh, I'm blanking on his last name. Some of these guys I didn't know as well. Uh, just weren't you know in my circle of you know, people so much. Uh, there was a tenor banjo player too, um, uh, or or a plectrum. Excuse me banjo player, kind of a jazz guy. Uh, anyway, yeah, go check out Steve Martin banjo winners and uh, go ahead and support all those musicians if you can. Um, I think time for just maybe a couple more. Um, I also wanted to say uh, I'm recording a record soon um, this summer. Next year will be, a for me in my, in my seminary formation, will be a spiritual year. Um, so I won't have phone or email. Um, I can just write letters and as a payphone at the seminary. But um, so I'll, I won't be able to do this sort of thing next year. But uh, before that happens, I'm recording this summer with Grant Flick, the fiddle player in Westbound Situation, and also Zach Brown, the not the country star, um, the cellist in Westbound Situation. They're coming out to Nebraska, and we're hoping to record some uh, kind of acoustic guitar uh, album stuff. It's not going to be bluegrass. It's it'll be more in in the vein of kind of like funk, soul, rock, R and B. I don't know. It's, you're like what? But trust me, it, you know it'll be fun. Um, just, just think really vibey acoustic music. Uh, that's, that's kind of all you need to know. But anyways, if you're interested in that, keep an eye out for that. You, you, you won't if you follow me on, well, I'm not on Facebook, but if you follow me, um, look out for Grant Flick and Zach Brown. I'll, I'll be on this record that we're going to make. Should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. A lot of crazy guitar harmonies and, you know, it, it'll be a really fun thing. So... Uh, my brother Nicholas is going to engineer it, as he has engineered many of my past projects. Uh, so, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, and let's see, I mentioned I studied in, at the University of Michigan. I was pursuing a jazz degree there before discerning the priesthood. Um, and while I was there, I learned, <laughs> somewhat learned, how to play jazz on the banjo. So I'm going to try to do some, some jazz here. Uh, this is one of my favorite tunes called Stella by Starlight. It was in an old movie. I don't know which one, but uh, you might know it. Yeah, leave it in the comments, I guess, if there's, if there's comments on this thing. I don't know what platform this is going to be on. But um, yeah, here's Stella by Starlight.
Sell my starlight. That's fun. The lyrics are beautiful, too. Um, let's see. Next, I think, uh, so, um, you banjo fans probably know Alan Mundy. He's one of the great banjo icons of, well, you know, the last few decades, I guess, and even before. Um, I've always loved the way that he blends jazz with bluegrass in this way that it's not clunky, you know, it just fits. It's very, very Alan Mundy. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. But uh, anyway, I'm a big fan of Alan Mundy. Uh, he was very influential on my playing, still is. And so I wanted to close with just this last one is a tune of his. It's called Peaches and Cream. I uh, will try to, to do it honor and justice. So <laughs> here goes nothing. Here's Peaches and Cream. And uh, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, please like the video. Subscribe to the... Uh, Sorry, I don't know if this is on, if it's on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, but um, follow the, the Banjo Museum. <laughs> Words are not coming out of my mouth, as they should be. Uh, you, you know what I'm trying to say, you know, fo follow the people who, who made this happen, because um, they, they do great work. Uh, Johnny Byer um, is, uh, I guess I'd call him a friend. To, uh, just, Used to see him at IBMA a lot, and uh, always love playing with him. Fantastic um, ban banjoist, um, and he uh, has done a lot of great work with the Banjo Museum as well as the other people there. So, yeah, truly an honor. Um, glad to be able to come out and play again in public for the for the first time in a little while. So. Uh, it, it may be the last time for a while, you know, that next year will be a spiritual year for me. So, yeah, uh, what, a, what a treat to be able to play for you guys and gals today. Uh, so, hope you've enjoyed this. Again, I'm Matthew Davis, um, and this is Peaches and Cream by Alan Mundy. Oh, I'm sorry. I fooled you. I wanted to play this banjo on this tune. I should have mentioned that. Um. Okay, close enough. Alright, here we go. Thank you.